Hey guys, Ash here and Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Sending some love, some positive vibes your way, especially if you need it there. Uh, if you're going through something, uh, much love to you. Giving you some strength. Take a deep breath. You can get through this. People always, always do. Today, I have invested in the worst Void Legendary. Screw that. The worst legendary in the game. Every time I make one of those worst legendaries in raid videos, you guys come at me in the comments. Jingwan is the worst. Ash, he's trash. Who said that? At least some of you guys. And let me start by saying, gonna cut all the way to the end for those of you who only had a minute to join me here, 45 seconds in today's video. I have no patience for useless things. Yeah, I don't think he's that bad. I don't think he's that good either, but again, cutting to the chase, He's made one of my new, like, main teams. He was value over replacement in an end game, dirty, stupid, pay to win account. So I am already thrilled that I invested in this champion. And that seems crazy to say about the champion with some of the worst reviews out there in the game. First of all, uh, not, not Jin Ro, Jing Wan, Ash, Jing Wan. There he is. So aesthetically, I mean, like, whatever. He looks pretty good, right? He's got that the big random hand of death here on his on his back. What's up, Jing Wan? How you doing, man? Jing Wan is the worst. Ash, he's trash. If we look at the reviews here, yeah, they're 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 bad, right? They're they're ones and twos about the champion with some of the worst reviews out there in the game. I am gay! I am wonderful! Yeah, pretty cool looking champion aesthetically. If we look at the reviews here, yeah, they're 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 bad, right? They're they're ones and twos, pretty much across the board. Nothing over 2.2 is at the highest score. 2.2 in faction wars. Man, he did receive quite a substantial buff about a year ago, uh, but still, it didn't seem like it was enough. At least it didn't compel me to invest in the champion. So let's go ahead and take a look at him. He's HP base first off on the base stats. They're pretty good. 23k on the HP, 1100 on the defense, speed at 103 across the board either above average or average uh doom exchange transfers all the buffs from this champion to the target on the a1 now on the a2 compound calamity it is a two turn cooldown okay very noteworthy here uh four but booked down to two Attacks one enemy, 100% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. Also, a block active skills for three turns on a two-turn cooldown if the target's under decreased accuracy and decreased crit damage. Now, you know me, and the first time I read this ability, even before I maxed out the champion, like before I actually played with the champion, this is why sometimes, you know, us stupid YouTubers, the talking heads on YouTube... Don't be so hard on yourself. Myself, first and foremost, right? We can give our opinions on champions, but until we actually try them out, it's tough to really, you know, understand all the nuances of a kit. Because when I first read this, I hated the conditionality on my block active skills, but it's a decreased accuracy, decreased crit damage. Even though he has it in his kit, who cares? Like, it's not that strong of an ability to be able to have to have conditionality with it. But... It actually works out way more often than you'd expect, right? Because you open up with the Power Flare's A3 ability on a four-turn cooldown attacks all enemies two times. First hit, decrease accuracy. Second hit, decrease crit damage. And then a strengthen on himself as well, okay? So these debuffs last for two turns, but that gives you on a two-turn cooldown the ability to come back in here and start locking people out after that with a block active skills because they're going to be under hopefully at least one of the two, right? He is Void Affinity. We don't have to worry about any negative matchups. So the kit before the passive, you know, it's... It's like a C minus or something, right? It's 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 okay. It's certainly not void legendary. But then you look at the passive, and this is what you know gets everybody's attention about the champion, and at least tempts them to invest in him, right? It's unchanged. The big thing that we always have to keep in our mind here is a four turn cooldown on the active effect. The passive effect is active all the time, okay? No cooldown on this. This champion is immune to fear, true fear, freeze, provoke, sleep, stun, and petrification. That is a lot of immunity. That's a really, really good passive on his passive. The active on his passive is also very good, albeit, you know, again, a four turn cooldown when, we, when he's booked out. At the end of each enemy or ally turn, removes all fear, true fear, freeze, provoke, sleep, stun, petrification debuffs from all allies and places a block debuffs for one turn on all allies who have those debuffs removed. So the cool thing about this ability is, is it happens at the end of each enemy or ally turn. So if say the dragon stuns everybody on your team, as soon as that turn is over, everybody's cleansed so they don't actually lose a turn. 
on my team, you know? It's very good in kind of niche situations in PvE. Any boss that is throwing out a CC debuff, you basically get cleansed on a four-turn cooldown automatically through this passive. It's really not bad, right? In the arena, the first time that somebody comes in there, Kaimar sleeps your team, it's gonna be removed immediately from everybody. So again, it's not, it, it, it's actually a really good ability to withstand that kind of first CC attempt by your enemies, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I have them built out. I decided to build them for a little bit of damage, guys. Check out Jing Wan here on, um, on hellhades.com, right? A three all overall grading. They give him a four in clan boss. They give him a four in dragon. A three and a half in Doom Tower waves. Dragon hard, they give four and a half, and I, I have to attest to that. Absolutely being the case. Actually, I think he's a five in uh, in Dragon. The A1 and the passive, you know? Uh, they give him like pretty uh, crummy scores here on Doom Tower. Frost Spider, you know, I could you could make the case he's, he's even better against Frost Spider, right? Uh, with that passive again. Uh, in terms of his multipliers, he has a, a 0 0.23 weak rating on his A1, a 0 0.35 average rating on his A2, and then on the A3, a 0 0.14 average damage rating on his a3 ability now that probably doesn't mean much to the majority of you guys watching so i want to compare it to eric's now we have eric's uh, up right now eric's is one of the better hp based uh nukers in the game and her good nuke is 0.35 hp with a strong damage grading so i have to say please have mercy on me sorry i'm like my allergies are killing me today i feel like i'm itching my face off sorry guys uh <laughs> So the cool thing is, is a 1.4, uh, a 0.14, well, albeit it's not a ton of damage. I'm not going to sit here saying he's a great nuker. I did build him to be a nuker because why not do a little bit of damage from this champion? Uh, but, you know, it's a times two hitter, right? So it gets to close to 0.3 and that's not too bad. I mean, it's more powerful than Eric's A1 and it's not quite as powerful, but it's creeping up on Eric's A2 ability when you combine the total damage. So overall... You know, not awful. He's not a, a massive damage dealer. Their, their base HP on Eric's and him are around the same too, so it's pretty comparable. Uh, so not a massive damage dealer, but he can dish out. He can pack a punch, you know? He can pack a punch on your squad. Uh, so kind of the weird thing about this dude is when you talked about Arena and PvP, it's like, okay, so what role is he exactly playing on our team here, you know? It's not like he's reviving or healing He's got a little bit of control here with a block active skills, but it's predicated on him going in there with the AoE times two first. Decreased accuracy is valuable. Decreased crit damage, not that much. You know, so it's just really the bummer about his kit is the passive is powerful, even on the cooldown. I think it is. Uh, the aura, by the way, HP in all battles, very good for progression. But then after that, He's really kind of a niche kind of filler role. He's not going to be your nuker. He doesn't hit that hard enough to be your nuker. Kind of a secondary nuker, right? Uh, he's not really dependable for control because it takes too long to get back to the A2. Uh, so really, you're looking at some secondary damage and some cleansing. And just an annoying champion, just tough to get rid of, right? Who's tanky. So that's kind of the weird thing about Jing Wan. I think that's why a lot of people, uh, you know, review him poorly and hate on him. And I mean, Ray doesn't even care about this champion. They're not even going to give him lore. They don't even give him lore, man. They're like, Jing Wan, he's at the bottom of the list. Anyway, here's how I have him built here, guys. Uh, we have HP on the ring. We have crit damage on the amulet. We have accuracy on the banner. We have crit damage on the gauntlets. We have HP percentage on the chest. We have speed on the boots. A quad crit rate roll. Whoa, I have a broken set here because I wanted to use these uh, boots so badly, right? Uh, I, I think in my account, I don't have, I probably have like five, six, seven, maybe eight uh, quad rolls, and I have two quad speed rolls, one on an accuracy and one on a perception uh, artifact. I actually posted on the community poll about a week ago. I just got one recently. Do any of you guys have any quad speed rolls? If so, congratulations. They're very hard to get. I've been playing this game for a long time, and I only have two. Uh, and I've upgraded a lot of artifacts. Anyway, I digress. And, you know, I think that I, I put him in a broken set too, just to kind of prove a point, right? That like, I feel like players sometimes, some players, not all, they're so married into, I need to have like viable sets on every champion. Sometimes you can make like an incredibly OP build just using all broken sets, like no artifact sets at all. Uh, or you put them in a four piece or maybe one two piece or whatever. And then you just kind of, you know, make do after that. But you can really prioritize good gear from sets that you don't use that much. Right. So I would encourage all of you guys to, you know, hide your this is, this is the easiest way to do it. Sorry for the big digression here, but it's important to, to cover it here is you come in here. 
you go priority stats. Let's just say I really wanted speed and accuracy and crit rate, right? Don't we all, right? So let's let's go ahead and put them on priorities. Uh, go to equipped, and then, or actually, just not, let's not go equipped. Let's just go regular. And then at the very bottom here, let me move over. I tried to actually move over. I'm like, let me move over. Bro, can you can you record properly? All right. So at the very bottom you hit hide set filters, right? It's a relatively new feature, but it's really important to do this. If you're not doing this right now, then give it a try, right? Because this is how you find all that good gear laying around that you forgot about in crappy sets, right? This avenging chest, for example, it is an accuracy chest with a triple speed roll. Man, the first time was so nice. I had to do it twice. Sorry, I was away from the mic there, so I screamed it. But I get a triple speed roll there, right? Uh, same thing uh, you know, with this. If I want a lot of accuracy, on boots well i have it right here so it's something that you guys can do for any stat or priority or anything that you're looking for right anyway uh we have them in lethal total stats as i was saying 76k in the hp a decent amount of hps hp based obviously attack does nothing on this champion some defense 234 in the speed 100 in 224 and then 354 in terms of stat priorities obviously uh i, I want to build some crit rate you don't have to go crit damage on the gauntlets but you definitely want to go crit rate on the gauntlets on this champion he's doing a decent amount of damage plus like we said before you want some utility out of this dude right uh beyond just the passive so he has 354 in the accuracy as well to help land those debuffs in terms of masteries we went with support and offense we kind of built him to be a little bit of a nuker here so we came down to ruthless ambush shield breaker uh we obviously picked up extra crit damage and keen strike we went to cycle of violence and we came down to helm smasher on the offensive side of things on the support we picked up the mastery the uh the accuracy masteries this is actually an old mastery build that i had like initially when i had the champion oddly enough I farmed the masteries on this champ, which I'd never really do. And I farmed them, and then I actually started to build the masteries before I build the champion, which is not the order that I normally do things. I say all that to say that I don't need Lord of Steel. It's not doing anything at all on this champion. You know, you also don't need sniper on this champion because everything's 100% chance at landing anyway. Uh, so I just basically came down there at Evil Eye and, uh, and uh, Master Hexer. All right, so let's go ahead and run this dude. I alluded already to the, oh, I didn't even talk about the blessing. Well, I put, uh, I actually got lucky or unlucky, depending on how you look at it. And I pulled a five-star blessing for Jingwon. That was a weird one. I don't know how I felt about it. It was like, ah, uh, yeah, yay, I think. I went with Brimstone. Uh, because it's gonna have accuracy anyway. I get a little bit more off this and then I get HP 6,000 HP on an HP based champion It seemed like the perfect way to go and plus at a, a five star I get a 60% chance of placing that smite So I think that that is the way to go I'm curious to see what what the Hades website recommends. They say a uh, soul reap brimstone or polymorph all very viable. I think Polymorph might be the way to go if you're going to utilize this champion just in the... It definitely, I would say, is the way to go. If you're going to utilize him in the arena, I wouldn't go Soul Reef because he's not hitting quite hard enough, at least for my taste. Anyway, let me bring you that Dragon team first, guys. All right, guys, so here's the team. Now, I'm going to show you the team setup really quickly. If you're lucky enough to have Jingwan and Staltus, then you can make a team like this. Very, very fun. We have Seer activation, so obviously Kaimar, Mausoleum Mage, and in Seer, nothing too crazy there. The one thing I will say on Mausoleum Mage on the third round, I actually have him opening up with a one ability and then coming into winds of purging because we're already going to have a cleanse anyway from Jingwan on that first stun. Moreover, we want Jingwan to open up with his A1 to transfer all debuffs from this champion to the target. So we want him to have those poisons so we can transfer them onto the dragon. Okay. We actually can have him open up with this ability as well here. So uh, on Staltus, we built him really slow, 132 in a six piece stone skin gear, okay? His job is to just to basically do his passive. Whenever, whenever an enemy attempts to land a poison on him, it reflects it back to the attacker. So the only stat that we really care about on this dude is just speed being slow and accuracy being high. That's, that's it. So that's it. That's the whole squad. Now, you can obviously make this team without Jingwan as well. Uh, Staltus is in a lot of ways like a hard carry for a Dragon 10. All right, so here we go. So Seer is going to go ahead and blow everybody up. We go to the second wave. Rinse and repeat, right? If you don't have Mausoleum Mage, you can run somebody like an Archmage Helmet. Uh, let's go ahead and see exactly what happens here. So all of those debuffs coming on us, we transfer them all back, right? Now Mausoleum Mage could actually go, could actually do his cleanse right away and probably, you know, save a little bit of time there. Maybe. I don't even know if it matters that much. But then Staltus just sits there. He's the last man standing, as we said. He already transfers everything back and that's it.
So it's a, you know, time 36 seconds. It was 35, two minutes ago. And I've only ran this like four or five times just to make sure it works consistently. But if we wanted to do better here, we could make sure that Seer killed everybody on that second wave, right? We could uh, actually, it seemed like we could use my uh, Mausoleum's Mage because Jingwan is faster anyway. We could use his cleanse. Let's just try it. Let's just try one more run here. And let's try using his cleanse uh, first instead of doing that silly stuff. I thought I could keep him alive long enough so he can get back to the A3. He didn't even end up using it, but because Jing Wan is faster anyway, he used his A1 and we were fine. All right, so let's repeat here. See if we can get a new best time. Come in there, kill everybody. Ha, ah, we're missing. I need to work on that. So we don't have a debuff for setting up Seer here. No decreased defense, no weaken or anything like that. So unfortunately, we're not killing everybody on the very first shot, only adds a second or two, but you know, we're speed running this. All right, so there we go. Oh, we did. We get, the cleanse came in first that time. All right, let's see if it makes a big difference here. At least it can keep our team. See, all those stuns removed. All those stuns removed by Jing Wan's passive. So we're still alive. It's just not going to be as fast. We're going to go in A1, transfer the debuffs right back the second wave. That's cool. Now again, is Staltus just reflecting everything until the dragon dies? All right, guys, let's go ahead and give him a run in the arena. Let's go ahead and start against kind of a squishier team. I have a go first team. I also have a go second team built, so I'll show you that one in a moment too as well. Uh, we'll just do like one or two battles with each team. Uh, so Sun Wukong, Kaimar, Arbiter, we go first. So that's great. Let's do a damage check here. First, let's uh, let's let's let uh, Sun Wukong sh highlight his kit a little bit there, right? <laughs> that's a nasty A2 he's got. It really is. We don't even need to revive him because he's going to bring himself back with a full turn meter in just a second. So let's keep the revive and the turn meter boost in case we need it later on. That's the A3 ability. What, around 20k damage? I mean, 30k damage or so? Nothing too crazy there against uh, Madame Ceres. It's not bad damage. It's not insane damage either. You know, that's why I said he's not going to be your main nuker. He's going to be kind of a hybrid type role. Let's go against a, a tankier team here. Uh, Gaius the Gleeful. I, I could really use... Maybe like a Mithrala on this team. Because um, I have nothing to get rid of the bombs. So let's go ahead and get Kaimar. You know what? I'll probably go first against a Siffy team anyway. It's just a matter of how high all their resists are, right? Let's just leave them on. All right, so two stone skins we're dealing with. We remove at least Gaius. That's good. Let's go in with the A2 here. Hope we don't kill her. We do. And we kill everybody. Dude, will you stop being so good, Sun Wukong? I'm about to remove you from this team, bro. But imagine how tired we are. Imagine how tired we are of it. The, the good news is, though, that was on auto, my bad. Uh, good news is they're going to get revived right now. So we still get a chance for the uh, for Jingwan to shine here. But you know what? Someone's hogging the spotlight. They're going to be like, oh, boom. <laughs> oh, what? What? Boom. All right. It's my time to shine. Okay. I would much rather, much rather the A1 of Jingwan be instead of like, st instead of uh, transferring debuffs, I would rather have him be able to steal buffs just because of stone skin, really, you know? All right, let's, uh, let's test out the A2. Again, not crazy damage. I think, didn't his A1 hit about the same as his A2? Uh, do I still have it up? I don't have it up anymore. All right, let's go in. There we go. Nice job. Nice job, uh, Sun Wukong. All right, stop hogging the spotlight, bro. All right, let's go against... Uh, b -b 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 hey, look at this, a Tormentine. This is actually great because we can remove the freezes from everybody, right? So Tormentine's not scary at all anymore, all of a sudden. Gonna turn meter boost. Normally, we wouldn't want to turn meter boost to everybody, but it's immediately going to get removed, right? But now our passive is burnt. But that's pretty cool still because we can go in here and, you know, let's go against uh, Mighty Uko. Everybody's dead. Sun Wukong, almost everybody's dead. But again, I mean, not to be... I don't want to overstate how amazing that was. It was cool, right? Uh, we cleansed it. it. But if everybody was frozen, we would have cleansed it from everybody because he can't get frozen. He's immune to freeze, right? The cool thing is, though, is Sun Wukong went on to kill everybody, uh, but he would have been frozen. He was the one who was frozen, so he wouldn't have been able to do that. We probably would have lost the battle. So, you know, some pretty cool utility there. Yukarl's another freeze champion. Let's see if they go first or we go first. I'm going to go ahead and... You know what? I'm going to automatically lose this one or, or um, lose this one on purpose, I should say, hopefully. Okay. Let's lose this one on purpose and see, let's just try another team. Let's try another team. I want to see if they go first, not if I go first, right? Uh, so I have this team 
uh, put together. Sun Wukong is our nuker still because I just, <laughs> I just love this champion, honestly. Uh, but we're not built to go first anymore, right? So they're going to go in. They're going to get all their debuffs in, blah, 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 blah. We get true fear. We get everything, right? Uh, we get in there. We remove the true fear from everybody. We place the block debuffs on everybody, right? Not bad. We can come in here with the A3. We kill one of them at least. They deny revival of Sun Wukong, but it's okay. We have Volgoth in there to keep reviving everybody in our team. Or excuse me, keep healing everybody in our team. And then Sun Wukong is going to stand back up. He has his A3 still fresh. It hasn't been used once. He comes in there, steals all the buffs, and kills everybody. Not bad, huh? And again, that was all of those fears, or true fears, from Mashalth were all cleansed by Jingwan's passive. Sometimes you only need to, for it to happen one time. So overall, man, I feel like I'm like trying to sell you guys on Jingwan here. That's not the case. I just got to say that sometimes when you go see a movie, you read a book, whatever, and everybody tells you it's the crappiest thing in the history of the world, you walk away feeling like, wow, that wasn't bad at all. I actually enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys did as well. Maybe a new healthy respect for Jingwan, the worst legendary in Raid Shadow Legends. Thank you for watching until the end, guys. Much love, and as always, take care. <laughs>